Hi, this is Annetta Andrews with Remax Realty Enterprise at AnnettaAndrews.com. And with me today, I have Lauren Andrews, a broker owner of Dominion Lending Expert Financial, who happens to be one of my favorite um, mortgage brokers. So we know each other a little bit. Uh, many of you might know that uh, Lauren and I have been married for a while. And today I get his attention for a little bit just to sort of bring um, some of the information to you that I have been asked, um, especially in the last month since COVID-19 came into our life. So I thought, you know, why not bringing this together and, and sort of answering some of the questions that have been coming up. Um, so Lauren, um, one of the first things that I kind of know uh, from experience, people are asking why mortgage broker versus the bank that they know. Could you just sort of shed some light on why should people be thinking mortgage brokers versus banks? Great, okay, uh, and then thanks for asking me that. That's actually a really good question. I've actually surprised you started with that, That's which, which is great because sometimes we make the assumption that everybody knows the difference. Um, so as a mortgage broker, is basically when you use a mortgage broker, you're leveraging the mortgage broker's relationship with multiple lenders, okay? So we don't represent any one particular lender. We have an array from the major banks to credit unions to what's called mono lenders, those lenders that just deal in mortgages um, and all sorts of different types of solutions. Um, so what it does is allows us to actually look at each individual person's um, situation, okay? and adjust a solution that suits not only their, their short-term and long-term goals, but ideally providing them um, a way of almost like, a, almost like coaching them because we're always there with them along that journey to build up their net worth and, and, and achieve their goals. So, uh, you know, one of the, the good things about using a mortgage broker is, is um, the cost. It doesn't cost us anything. So when we, um, when we actually do financing for um, different uh, places, uh, different people, uh, we bring them to the, the lenders. Those lenders pay us. They all kind of pay us the same thing. So you're leveraging our relationships. I have, I have uh, people from Scotiabank that work for Scotiabank that come to me to get their Scotia mortgages just because we get discounts on the rates that they don't get, that type of thing. So um, you definitely want to tap into using a mortgage broker rather than going right to your branch. Um, because that branch only has what the branch is able to offer and sometimes the rates aren't uh, that good and it's not always about rate I'll tell you that right now um, it's you got to understand exactly what type of product is most suited for what your needs are and uh, what your goals are awesome thank you so much all right so jumping into um, the COVID-19 situation that we've been dealing uh, for almost a month here in Canada um, you know, and, and some people know from news and from different uh, medias that banks are pulling together and helping them. But I'm not sure if everybody understands exactly how those banks are helping. What are the options that they've come up with? Um, that, yeah, that's great because I know that, you know, the clients are hearing things from different sources and they're calling these numbers and, and they're not getting the answers. And, and when we talk to some of our lenders, they've asked us to actually, you know, help get the information out to clients in terms of what's available. Because uh, some of the lenders in that first week, they were getting four to 5,000 calls a day. It was crazy, right? So, um, so basically what's happened is all the lenders have set up portals and, and depending on what lender you're with, you're going to be able to do that. And what I'll do is I'll make sure that I get you access to what that is. So if any of your clients are looking for that information, you can send that off to them. Um, yes. Yeah, and so, so some of the lenders, what they're doing is they're looking at every, every individual situation They're They're allowing some deferments of those mortgage payments. Um, now every lender is kind of um, case by case, right? So basically if you've lost your job or lost some type of in, uh, income, that's going to, um, be make it very difficult for you to make those payments um, you're eligible for deferments now some of the lenders um, you know they can defer up to six months but some of them are just doing a couple months at a time right because mm -hmm. we don't know how long this is going to happen um, 
and, and you have to keep in mind too that even though you're not making up payments on that deferment, there's still interest accumulating. And because you haven't paid any anything off on that interest, it's going to end up costing you more money down the road, right? So um, you don't want to defer longer than you need to, um, yeah. but it's available. There's also the insurers are also looking at, um, so if you're, you're a mortgage insurer with CMHC, Genware, CG, there's um, programs that the insurers have as well for um, debt relief. Uh, some of them are looking at reamortization of the loans, that type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And that's actually been, you know, a lot of people don't know that, but a lot of a lot of times with the insurers, that program has been in place forever. So if there's ever a situation where, no, forever, but it's been <laughs> it's been there for a long time. Um, and when clients get into a situation where there's job loss or, or whatnot, the insurers will actually work with them to help them with their payments, right? So so there's that has always been there uh, for the longest period of time. It, many people don't know about but can I, with this, ask, mm -hmm. yeah. can I just ask is it generally the insurance so it, does it only apply to the mortgages that have been insured um, at the purchase time yeah, yeah that's a great, great question so on the um, yeah so for the insurers to deal with it yes it, it's an insured mortgage they're dealing with their clients that have paid the, that insurance premium um, mm -hmm. to help to help them with regards to the COVID and the individuals, it's independent. It's really being done with the banks, okay? Right. So um, two different kind of scenarios. Um, but uh, right now, the deferment is is um, is a possibility if you're in that situation. And you're saying you're going to provide me with a list for all those options. So if anybody needs to reach out to me, um, I'll pass this information along or I'll connect them with you. Absolutely. Um, if, if that's that's the necessity yep. um right so going uh, is there anything else you can add to this or you pretty much um as far as as the i mean everything is changing there's also i mean we can get into some stuff a, a little later too just in regards there are some other programs that are out there that are helping people along the way and those they seem to be adding those you know it, whether you whether you love or hate the government they've actually been doing a pretty good job in keeping us informed in terms of what's, what's coming down the pipeline to help Canadians um, during this particular time. And depending on, on your individual situation, you may qualify for some of those things. Awesome. So uh, Lauren, just, I guess about a month before everything started happening. So um, in, in February, late February, I believe, uh, or even beginning of March, the government had said that they were going to, um, work with uh, the, the buyers in terms of the stress test that was uh, coming up and they were going to have some major changes come down to the stress test for qualifying for the purchases um, as of April the 6th. What happened with that program? Okay, so uh, yeah, um, that program is still there. It's just been shelved for now. Um, there's just been um, you know the whole dynamic of of the way this industry has changed with with uh, with the um, crisis that we're dealing with right now. It it didn't make sense for them to make those changes. Now rates have come come down. The um, the Bank of Canada overnight rates been decreasing. I think it's a quarter percent right now, and um, that's caused interest rates to flow down a little bit. So they have decreased the stress test. Uh -huh. Under the old rules, like the same ones as they would, so it went it now it's like 5.04 is what you need to qualify at. They will be making those changes once everything comes back to normal. Um, they'll make those changes and they'll put those changes in place to allow you know that ability to now uh, increase your purchasing power and in, in what you would qualify for. Um, but for right now, um, that's been kind of just put on hold. That's wonderful. And just uh, to finish off this, um, what are some of the other ways that uh, you know that people have been sort of um, able, to, what are the ways you guys can help people if they find themselves in a financial situation, financial difficulty? Um, you know, that's, a, that's okay, great question. So 
we can look at from our particular side of things if it's a financing side we can look at areas of, of refinancing so right now we're doing a lot of credit lines and things like that we're adding those on to get just to give people the peace of mind of being able to have access to cash um, right. in some particular cases we've been doing there's short-term loans that were available um, which are which are very quick. They they fund within three days, and we can do up to forty thousand dollars. And it's not like a second mortgage; it's just a really a loan. You have to be a homeowner um, to qualify for those. Those are really um, really quick as well. Um, short of that, I mean, other things that you want to look at um, from a homeowner is, is just basically your particular situation. You want to look at. Uh, particularly if there's been adjustment of income during this particular time, you want to look at your costs. Okay. Um, you know, maybe do some budgeting and figure out, you know, some of the things that, you know, you've been spending some money on, maybe you can cut down on some of those costs. Um, you know, we can, the other thing too, is if there's situations where you have credit card debts and everything else, make sure, please, please, please make sure if you're in a situation where you're in a cash crunch, you reach out to those credit card, credit card companies ahead of time. Um, sometimes we'll use those quick loans to pay down those credit cards and that type of thing as well. But uh, make sure you don't miss payments because your credit score is so important. Um, and it's more important if you if you can project there's going to be cash flow issues, be proactive and call those companies ahead of time um, and let them know because they will make arrangements because you've been proactive in, in uh, yeah. letting them know, right? So then they just need to know what to expect from you and sort of they'll work. I, I hear that most of the institutions are willing to work with everybody right now for as long as they know what your situation is and what the payment plan is, right? So. Exactly. And you you want to also keep informed. And on this on that same list that I can send you with the contact, there is an update on all the types of different government programs. You can get some subsidies on. There's some wage subsidies. There's for, um, for employers. There's... Uh, um, there's employment subsidies. They can, you know, they can um, subsidize up to 75% of payroll and things like that mm -hmm. in certain situations. Um, so I'm going to make sure you have that list as well. So there are resources out there, but some of the stuff we can do and, and the government's willing to help too with some of the areas. Wonderful. Lauren, thank you so very much for your time and um, for the answers. I, like I said, everybody kind of is looking for them and, and many different sources give many different opinions. I know this is also all happening on the whim and a lot of times we're all kind of just winging it to try and help people and it's all, all gonna resolve itself hopefully sooner than later. So I wanted to thank you very much. If anybody has any questions, please reach out to me. I'll put you in touch with Lauren. Uh, thanks and you have a great day. Thank you so much, Annette.